good to speak with you, man. Hi, hey. how are you? Goodness me. How you doing? Not bad, man. Not bad. So it's just turning lunch there, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's, it's one o'clock now. Ish, it's just coming ish. up. Here. No yeah. worries at all. How has um how has the day been for you so far, man? Yeah, it's good. Uh, it's it's nice and sunny here. That's um, good. So I got up early, went for a little run. Excellent. Um, yeah, it's always nice. I In knew the, the jewel line had to come from somewhere, man. You clearly were a runner. <laughs> Either a runner or a cyclist. No smoke blowing. That's that's I could tell. Yeah. Uh, a a bit of, yeah, yeah. A bit of smoke blowing. A little bit. <laughs> no, there. no. Oi, oi. I. Two hundred and seventy-one episodes in. Never smoked. Never blown any smoke. Never hyper any bullied. <laughs> hyper <Okay>. bullied. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I. Uh, the reason why I think I noticed it. Uh, I think in the past twenty episodes or so of the various different shows, uh, the the first thing I I tend to maybe it's also the COVID era. I just. I kind of get a pulse kind of gauge on how the person's doing health wise. It's like, what's going on? How you doing? Like with Richie Beckett, I just kind of went on. I'm like, yeah. So, cause he's based in Wales um, and he's always outside. Like he, 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 made, he bases most of his art um, just on his surrounds really. Oh, where is he? Okay. Um, very rural Wales, you know, this guy. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. But so uh, whereabouts in the UK do you find yourself? Well, I'm actually in Hamburg, so... Oh, cool. Um, Excellent. Yeah, so I'm, I'm a South Londoner, so okay. uh, moved here to Hamburg mm -hmm. ooh, about seven, eight years ago. Oh. Um, so I, I came here because my wife was living here, or my girlfriend at the time was living here, so I oh. uh, came and lived here. Um, yeah, we've, uh, we've just kind of, in the last few years, we've moved to a really nice part of Hamburg. We were mm. kind of originally in... in a, uh, the in deep in St. Pauli in the red light district. So it's kind of, um, <laughs> it was a rich, a rich area. There's, there's loads to see and it's, you know, as an artist, it's great. There's lots of inspirational things there, but, um, we're in, we're in now the hipster quarter, which we never really wanted to be in, but <laughs> we found a nice house and it was kind of, the rent was cheap enough. Uh, and it's kind of, it's a dream house actually. It's got such a lovely vibe here. It's, really really beautiful yeah That's yeah really yeah great. i love yeah. that and and i am one of those people where it's because the patterns i do and the podcasts and all that that creativity is so tied into the place in which you create for me personally at least uh absolutely. you know yeah, absolutely yeah i think your sort of um the building of the nest is i love that that's a, a kind of core component for you yeah 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 um, totally i mean you, you you spend so much time in this environment and mm -hmm. you feed off of it and uh, it feeds off of you as well so um yeah hugely important we've got really lovely high ceilings and beautiful look work and stuff like that so uh it's it's yes yeah, it's, it's just it's just got such a lovely vibe here the sun shines we, we face south so the sun shines through our windows all day long um gets a little bit hot when we didn't have curtains when we first moved in we were kind of in a greenhouse but now we can afford curtains so it's good oh. and uh the the sun the sun doesn't shine in so much and it's yeah it's a be beautiful place Lovely. well you know what you just did is uh, for the people listening maybe because it's all around the world obviously you'll have people you know battered with rain riding their bikes home you just sort of took them on a little kind of mental journey to like a very peaceful <laughs> nook i always think of uh, the various different uh you know walks of um listenership um i wanted to ask I mean, you're totally cool to do the audio only if you want but there's the video option if you want but if you're chill with audio i am chill with that as well man um I, yeah i'm just uh, not so good with zoom so how do i uh, i think with zoom it's just you go um uh, start video start video mm -hmm. that's the one there we go excellent this guy over here even okay see here's the thing so usually you expect the profile picture to be like okay yeah no that's my best you know you're looking even better man you look actually more vibrant <laughs> than, the, than the picture you sent me man you should you need to update it man yeah oh really okay thank you that's very kind that's that's really that's, that's right dude i'm digging <laughs> i was it, looking man. haggard in that old one okay that's that's good to know <laughs> man i'll call it because now it's like the basis of friendship is complete unfiltered honesty and i have to right off the bat be like buddy you, come on get that what is that that uh you know i mean i will say though you you do walk the line between you know uh punk roadie uh but also owner of a vegan 
uh, you know, a, a, a vegan um, milkshakery fused <laughs> with, fused with a gallery somewhere in like Soho. Okay, or yeah, no, that's, um, yeah. You pretty much busted me there. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah. the <laughs> second life of uh, of uh, I, so it's just CD man. So I just love that. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, we have an artist here, C W Stone King. Um, uh, he just goes. He he just go by C Dub. He just goes. Yeah. I'm like, all right. Nice. Cool. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's got a kind of fresh sound to it. And I just want to say, see the, the eternal medium. I mean, I did a big old, um, I hope this isn't sacrilege. I had the, the box set that you so, uh, like, would transcendingly beautifully design man let me just fucking lay it all on you you, you sit there and you take this now on behalf okay. of the fucking mars Volta community man this fucking thing a dream come true this this monolith right with so right. much clearly invested care and love and attention that you wow. really kind of just sort of took in you talked about how you know we, we we are in these spaces and we take in energy and then we put it out i, I feel like everything from the arrangement of the art you can just see that you sat with the entirety of the volta uh of their entire like you know they're so eclectic and so it's almost you'd almost think maybe hard to pin down what's some consistency there and then when i saw on like stray i think you said tribute to storm you know the the, the pink floyd storm ferguson I was like, nah, man, this is your, your peer to peer. That's like you and Storm, man. Like, I mean, you know, rest in peace and stuff, but just, it's just so fucking unique too. And then the off kilter, like, I don't know if I'm a symbolist, so I, I read into it. It's the, you know, it's the askew, like you've got this thing sitting there on your, uh, you know, whatever furniture. And it is just that tilt to the side and that I've always associated Volta with just, you know, Volta, uh, the, the word Italian um, and in Spanish and stuff, but Volta means to, to, to change, to, 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 to do a turn, you know, uh, Giravolta, you know, to, to turn around. So I don't know if that influenced maybe the layout. Uh, so you've actually turned things on their side and that's what the Volta did with Prague. They fucking took Prague yeah, and they, they fucking turned it. So I'm goosebumps all over, man. You are fucking with it. You are with it as an art designer, so an art director. And you, so you're a painter and you just like launch into it, man. Um, mini bio yeah, on, I this, uh, on this. Um, I, don't so much, I don't so much paint. Uh, I, I have started painting recently, uh, but uh, kind of traditionally, you know, from, from uh, what I've been doing recently before Corona started um, is uh, I was exhibiting... Uh, my own work. So I was making uh, screen prints. I put together a little um, a little gallery piece called um, I Can Do Typographic Hyperbole. I just choose not to. So no. it was kind of, um, <laughs> it was kind of looking at, um, there's a lot of boutique galleries around the, around the world that all have their typographic screen print posters. Uh, and what I wanted to do personally was, you know, if you're a typographic screen print, poster artist, yeah, chapeau. Um, I don't mean it nastily, but for me personally, <laughs> I wanted to create something um, in, 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 about, about this, in about as much the same time as it takes to create a typographic uh, ah, poster. I see. Um, I just think that they're so omnipresent and a little bit too easy, you know, keep calm, carry on, you're doing fine and all that thing. So some of them are a little bit too easy. Um, so that was that was just you know my my take on what the galleries were doing. Um, so I wanted to produce artwork in about the same time as it takes to create um, these typographic posters. It's as much a, a kick up the ass to me to just yeah. get on and, and do stuff as well. So I put together about 10, 10 screen prints, um, black and white screen prints for that using a montage process that I kind of developed um then uh that was that was going pretty well um did a, did a couple of galleries we had nice, people man. suggesting that we should do art basel as well so we had a few uh invites to that um and i, d I don't think it was really the right time for that because it was like the first yeah. the first thing i'd done but um in terms of in terms of being an independent artist mm -hmm. um but yeah, um, that's awesome. Man. I want to yeah. ask you about the, the 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 twin spheres, although maybe one's maybe a subsidiary or a satellite to, uh, you know, you've got CD Clark and then you have Stray LTD. 
uh, or Stray Limited. Or um, I actually initially, before I found out about it, I was like, well, if you're doing that, you know, mononym thing, this, you know, as a the artist known as Stray, I was like, oh, that's fucking rad. I can dig that. <laughs> <laughs> that's rad, dude. You know, Le Corbusier, you know. Um, so, but yes, yeah, so the origins of the, I suppose, because I, I love etymology um, uh, of Stray, is that, uh, is it, um, you know, like a pseudonym of yours or uh, what's the um, relationship between the two? Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a definite link between what I do as an artist and what I do as an art director. So I use the stuff that I do as an artist to feed into the stuff that I do as an art director in some ways, if I'm lucky enough. I mean, in with the Mars Volta, I was, you know, very privileged and lucky enough to be able to do that. Um, I think um, Stray originated because I was freelancing. So I was a little stray going around different different design oh. agency things and, oh. and art, art agencies um, put, putting stuff together. So that's, that's where it comes from. Mm. Um, it's been going now for probably since about 2005 something excellent like that. well done um, man. Um, yeah yeah i mean you know it, it has its it has its waves mm. of uh, it has its peaks and it has its troughs like like all businesses i guess um it's a long time to be yeah. in the space though and uh you know artists tend to be a bit self-effacing self-deprecating i like to open up the big italian floodgates of like fucking well done man like that's rad yeah, you know? you. it's important you. to yeah. To, to, to be generous with that kind of thing because it's again you know and that's that shows longevity it shows that you're in tune with the changing rhythms of that space and uh you've developed this kind of willow like thing that can kind of flow with um as you said picks and troughs you know yeah yeah no, it has to has to i mean you know what what is coming up we just yeah. don't know at the minute you know i think it's a bad time for artists in general we've got you know i had to stop exhibiting or you know uh, trying to find new exhibition spaces. Um, at the begin beginning of lockdown, I, I started doing stuff, uh, bits of photography with um, with a mobile phone uh, mobile phone camera. Oh yeah, so cool, kind of, nice. But scanning scanning uh, in panoramic mode and just kind of scanning the environment and distorting the environment and things. And mm. you know, I was trying to. Um, that that was something that I wanted to exhibit, and I thought I was doing it in lockdown. Um, but yeah, it seems like such a distant time now. Yeah, and they all seem. Yeah, they, it, it's. I don't know. I don't know. They were kind of quite positive, weirdly enough. As much as they were distorted, they were quite positive images. Some of them. Um, but yeah, I think if I'd have been able to exhibit it at the time, it would have been great. Mm. Um, at the minute, it seems like such a distant memory, and we've gone through so many lockdowns that you just kind of want to forget them all. I think now <laughs> we all get out the other side here, here yeah. in Germany. Anyway. I think. I think you've just spoken to a lot of artists where it's like, oh yeah, that particular era associated with that time, those people, and uh, but yeah. Um, what's great is though, uh, with me and my patterns, for example, I'll have a lot of, the, I mostly started making them after some army stuff that happened with me. Uh, in 2005, I would just in the margins of my like French class book, just create these sort of asymmetrical, uh, there's a thing in nature called morphogenesis, which is just the manner in which nature makes patterns. It's just, I was like, okay. wow, yeah. you know, um, and so then I took that into metamorphogenesis and, um, and just kind of uh, it's cathartic. It's um, do you, do you have that? I want to maybe open that up to you. Is uh, is 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 there a an avenue of just because I know that there's several steps to what you do and everything. But um, you know, Cedric actually, uh, I remember one of his one of my takeaways from an interview of his was, I'll uh, and also Omar, uh, I'll always he says I'll always have a couple of things going you know a couple of projects that if i get tired of one i'll just be able to put myself into the other do you have similar kind of you know multiple plate spinning with the uh, creatively i mean um i like experimenting a lot so generally um i'll have something in the background like at the minute i'm experimenting with painting mm. um trying to bring my skills up a bit a bit more with painting nice. um and and with printing a little bit as well and then there's the more commercial stuff so Probably again answering the question of what, how do how do I fit in with Stray? Mm. There's a lot of experimentation with what I do, and then I can use that in the in the final product of, of something uh, which is more commercial. So yeah, it's good to have multiple projects um, if it's not a genuine project. Yeah, I'd, 
I'm always writing something down or, or, no. or having, having a silly conversation with the missus over breakfast <laughs> that, that turns quite arty usually. So, yeah, it's good. That's very wholesome. That's lovely. Um, uh, you touched on, uh, you know, the various different projects. Um, um, I mean, I, I, I do like to go into tangents, man, and be and feel free as we go along. You know, if you want to dive into, uh, you know, some people um, when there's the podcast context, it's like why why not just get the you know the CD Clark story down? It's up to you, man. Like I don't really like enforce anything. It's very just organic. But uh, I guess you know if it is, is it your first podcast, by the way? It is my first podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. thank you very much for inviting me as well. I'm, no, I'm, I, I, you I'm have a good lovely. back and forth rapport, man. I, I wouldn't have thought that. I think you have a good way of holding, holding space on a, on a show. I think I want to see the CD Clark podcast now. I'm sorry, it's. <laughs> I think that'd be good. Yeah, cool. Boring pretty quickly, but um, it won't. And I'll tell you why. Geez, the set. I'm gonna. Ha I'm with a machete cutting away through the self-deprecating. Uh, and it's the same. You no, know, Cedric's the same. Omar's the same. Johan, I'm sure. Uh, I think it's the mark of all great artists is they they have a bit of a. The first time I heard the word self-effacing was it was David Gilmore. Uh, okay. Yeah, someone was talking about him, and it was um, in 2012 when I met my messes. And uh, I was all about, man, I, I just couldn't put down um, Learning to Fly, that song. I just kept looping it, you know, working on a big pattern work. Um, uh, yeah, I, obviously, I guess I can open that topic up is uh, music, how, how tied in, it, in with um, your creative process is music? Is it playing Absolutely. usually? Or, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it depends on, on the part of the process that I'm at. Uh, if I'm if I'm deep into making something then yeah music is wonderful if I'm sort of if I need to use my my brain I find it difficult because I'll probably switch my attention to to what's going on in the music rather than focus myself on the on the task at hand so it depends on the part of the process but for when I'm working on on musical things um so you know a box set for the Mars Volta I have to immerse myself pretty deeply into that so um yeah constantly listening to to mars volta over the last oh, two yeah, years you were. Nice. yeah it has, to be. it has to be i mean there's a hell of a lot of research goes goes into it all um i had to i had to look at what their previous releases were in physical format so you know of course. Um, yeah uh is it a triple gatefold is it um colored vinyl um mm. and, all, all, the, all the parts of of, uh, of their previous releases. I mean, the, the one thing that I was, I was, I'm really intrigued by is um, a promo of Wax Simulacra. Oh, Wax Simulacra! Oh. <laughs> but it's a it's a CD, it's a DVD, mm. and it's a record as well. It's a flexi disc, kind of stuck on a CD and a DVD. Wow! And uh, a guy on Instagram uh, posted it, and I was like, "Wow, that's so cool!" Yeah. Um, I'd love to, I'd love to get that in my hands just to have a look, or to, if someone can post some some better pictures of that, that would be great. Because um, shout out to the, yeah. all the folks uh, following along on the Instagram, uh, and uh, we had um, uh, actually now that you mention that Wax and Malaka are my first ever Mars Volta song, by the way. So okay, uh, back when there was before you know before YouTube, there was just you had the iTunes Store, and you'd be able to. I would just spend like a bunch of hours just going through and I. Um, there's a certain 30 second chunk of wax simulacra that I'm like, yep, that was my the beginning of the voltage. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. Man, no. um, now obviously, if we got uh, um, uh, the, let's see if we can start. We, we we could start at the very very start, but um, one thing before we dive into that for a bit of levity uh, for for uh, Cedric and Omar tuning in because I'm sure they will maybe check it out. Who knows? Uh, when you're listening to this designing things, you know, you seem to have. Um, uh, in terms of your vibe, I would say pretty kind of like scented, mellow kind of thing. But when you were like deep in designing this thing, were you bopping around a bit? I think that that would make them kind of like... Yeah, you have to. Yeah, man. Um, you, gotta, yeah. you can't I've, listen to Volta without bopping around a bit, you know, just... Yeah, no, I've, I've got uh, pretty noisy neighbors, so I always try and crank the music up and, and just, yeah, jump around as much as possible. That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah totally. Just, you just made Cedric uh, <laughs> smirk there, I think, for sure. Um, <laughs> um, well, actually, let's just maybe we'll, we'll we'll jump around a bit. But in terms of this connection that you've made with the Volta, uh, I can only assume based and, and you talked about this Wax and Lacra release 
and uh, with uh, both Cedric and Omar being so prolific, I would love to see more from you with them in terms of now that you guys have Venn diagrammed, you know, creatively, uh, is, uh, you know, without giving anything away if everything's, you know, anything kind of secretly, but like, you know, you sometimes you have to kind of keep things secret for whatever reason, but uh, I could see uh, this beginning to be like a, you know, Clouds Hill, they've developed that connection and uh, with... Yeah. When you do this work for, for these bands and, and with Mars Volta, would you want to maybe do a bit more maybe with uh, Omar and like uh, get into some yeah, designing totally. some of his future stuff? Yeah? yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, you know, exceptionally creative artists. And I think what I love about uh, Volta is, is, is the storytelling. So yeah, man. Um, for me, uh, in, in a lot of the art that I love and a lot of the art that I do, uh, there's, 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 I put storytelling as a, as a as a thing that's oh, yeah. prominently from you know, are you ready for this story, yeah. this, is, this is what i like to do i'm going to bring up actually the artwork and because i just do it's i and maybe i don't know you probably uh did some art school i'm, I'm assuming uh with yeah uh, yeah, yeah. yeah there yeah, you I go studied. yeah for sure uh, i did um here at uh, the australian institute of art um well australian national university art school soa and um so that thing about the tilting of the volta and, and all of that i noticed that in terms of just the artifact of it itself um so it wasn't just as you said you're the art director so it wasn't just uh, you know taking jeff's art and the nocturne kit art and like fusing and the jelly you know we finally have um that's that's an amazing uh a, like it's a small thing you, you'd think but for Omar it really meant a lot uh, to have the jellyfish yeah that comes back. direct from Omar that was that was something I remember the first conversation I had with Johan um, mm. and he was telling me about some of the things that they wanted to put right mm. uh, from day one so yeah that's that's come direct from Omar that's excellent yeah. did you end up meeting uh, Cedric and Omar and stuff um, I've met Omar um, at Cloud Hill Festival and had um, had a very brief conversation with him that's cool, um, and we, we talked over the phone, uh, obviously, about the art and um, yeah. how we were going to progress it and, and what he, particular characters that he, he wanted to appear. He's got his own favourites and as mm. a Cedric. And um, it's like, yeah, yeah, can we, can we get this, this guy in, this woman in? And yeah, yeah. yeah, it's very enthusiastic. I dig it, man. Well, I'm looking at it now and I have a few riffs for you and uh, knock them right out of the sky if I'm way off. Uh, I do okay. like to, I mean, I always say across again, over 270 episodes, uh, that if you're diving into some even just granular super analysis, you might even, one of the things my, my refrains is um, analysis for analysis' sake, even if it was way outside of what the artist intended, you've done that kind of creative um free association work which ended up enhancing it for you so okay. i just want to say in terms of color first of all uh, mood uh you're talking you've got the the teal and the turquoise which are just colors of change and transformation you know in in terms of kind of chromatic symbolism and uh mm -hmm. they're always changing they just will not ever sit on their laurels either omar or cedric uh, oh, or the band okay. and um across their entire discography there's that sense of change uh, changing time signatures change 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 so the prominence of teal and uh, turquoise as a as a color symbolism geek was that intentional um i don't think it was necessarily intentional i was okay. what i was feeding off of um was really i had to marry uh storm's work i had with uh, jeff's work and with uh, sunny's work so um really i think putting putting say uh, the teal and blues across um, the mannequins, the mannequin dummy, and in, in the foreground was really just to, to just to embed him. So I'm working really in terms of colours um, with with what I'm being given in that respect. I, I, I wanted. It's really important when I when I work with photographers. It's really important not to change their photography too much, just to kind of maybe maybe just enhance, just to push something just a little bit. Mm. And I think it was important here like every single piece that is in each of the six collages hmm. is just purely from their album covers. There's nothing, the only thing that I wanted to add was a little story to, to bring them all together ah, and yeah. to make it a piece of art rather than a piece of design. So rather than just, yeah. you know, um, each cover 
Hmm. On the front, and, and I can well. see, I can absolutely see a thread here, and, and I'll pitch it to you definitely. Uh, and what I love is the subtlety of the nocturna cat in the background. You know, beautiful the placement yeah. of it. Um, uh, you have a, a strong kind of dualistic, uh, you know, with the twin corners of the of the walls. Obviously, there's a little uh, tip of the hat to you know. Uh, there's a there's a Pink Floydy aspect there to that, but uh, very subtle. Um, and what I love is again, this is maybe just me uh, with um, how reading some of the behind the behind scenes stuff leading up to la realidad dos años um uh, was uh to get um permission and to, to clear away all of the, the bs kind of copyright whatever that was that was preventing something like this from happening and the literal turning of a corner uh, of the history of the band you know and it just i see this prominence of these two corners and one corner could be omar's corner and the other could be, you know, uh, Cedric's. And again, maybe not intentional, but I see that strongly as. Uh, I, think, I think it's. Yeah. I think it's very important to to have some ambiguity in there as well. You know, that's that's yeah. the really nice thing about it. For I did a little interview with um, a little video with Clouds Hill for them, um, and I think what it's important. I, there's things that I want to say about about the art, about what has inspired me to do it. Mm. Um, but there's things that I don't want to say because okay. I think because it means so much to other people as well. I'll That's gladly, good. I'll gladly tell you as much as I know and as much as I, f I feel is relevant about about all of the art. But at the end of the day, I think it's lovely that you have your interpretation of it as well. And I, th I think that that is really important because as a kid, when I was looking at album covers, they were you know I, you fall in love, you make a real connection yeah. with the image because you love the music that's contained within there so much and all three you know all, all these components kind of come together and it, it makes it something really special for you mm -hmm. i know what it's like to be a fan i'm a fan of other of, oh, of yeah. so many bands you know and, and you know as a, as a teenager growing up that's they're your fanatical years i think <laughs> and uh, yeah right. it's, it's it's really important for people to to have a connection and, and to make their own bond with with the imagery maybe that's just me maybe that's just what artists do and that's and, cool and maybe man. maybe you know other people just don't think so deeply about it i don't know but yeah that's that's how i feel about it so anything anything yeah. that you feel about it it is absolutely in there i vibe with it it's, ambiguity is something which yeah. you know which needs to be in there i mean ambiguity charges things with an energy of it's like a permanent uh, eternal battery of timelessness that you can just uh you can always circle back to it with a new interpretation you bring a new uh stage of your life to this art and that's certainly something i've done with Volta's music where uh, i've i, I guess uh, definitely a bedlam has helped me through some stuff i mean uh, i don't want to sound too tropey or trite with it but it is true that 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 um music can have this almost a bit like pets it's like they can just have this unconditional presence and uh you know yeah with uh, that's definitely been the case with me is there any um particular it doesn't have to be vault or anything but uh, uh music that you would say hey this is something that it's like if i'm in a certain mood or at a certain stage like i'll i'll, I'll bust out like uh a blood mountain uh by mastodon because i know it's like the opening line is you know the crossing of the threshold it's like if i'm having a, a, a genuine like monomythic cambellian struggle in my life I'll, I'll just unconsciously put it on. Is there anything like that for you, man? Um, I, I think, yeah, I've gone through many different stages. I'm sure you have as well. You know, you, you, you have these different stages throughout your life. I think recently uh, for lockdown, for, um, uh, for New Year's, I was playing a lot of Funkadelic in Parliament. And yeah. my, my, my wife's a <laughs> classically trained musician, so she doesn't... She doesn't know so much of Funkadelic and Parliament, but she was just dancing around the front room, going crazy, going, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I, have, I have really, for me at the minute, I've been playing a lot of that because I think the vibe really, really helps yeah. helps us both. Um, um, yeah, what have we been playing a lot? I mean, what I play a lot at the moment is um, a lot of Tribe Called Quest. I, Big fan oh, of Tribe Called Quest. So, um, I've got quite an eclectic taste in music. So, um, cool, man. yeah, a lot, a, lot of, a lot of different stuff goes on our turntable. And obviously, Volta has been played a lot here. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's set the vibe here, I think, really. I think eclectic is best, uh, and the best kind of eclectic is organically eclectic. 
uh, which is that sense of, uh, you know, almost like sediment, like you just pick up these different layers over time. Uh, I find with some uh, that it can just be a bit too sporadic. Uh, I think as much as I love some of what he stands for, like Captain Beefheart, <laughs> like okay. can, there yeah, are cool. some artists that they just go random for random sake. And I, I never drew that with Volta, uh, even with the, you know, Cedric's, um, when I did, you know, uh, um, Undyne Orgiastic Cantata, like my completely <laughs> fictional Volta album I tagged you mm -hmm, in, mm -hmm. um, the something that I, I really hope, even, even if they do end up just like closing it off as like this, this was in, you know, the, the box set and that's the what the Mars Volta was, if they don't return to any other records later down the line, uh, I just I have to say that um, you know they, they created the two of these men you know like uh, and something that you were so deftly able to to, to communicate with the set and again it is no small task it's no nothing to sniff at to 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 really have something that encompasses and represents it and it celebrates it so well this uh, existence spanning and and the eclectic eclectosphere you know encompassing. Uh, uh, discography and and um you know the, the the fusion of of omar's like it can it can literally go anywhere and that was I'm, I'm sure that was the sense that they set out after at the drive-in which was this more hard-edged kind of you know very almost like punky kind of energy into that frankly insanely inspiring sphere of like this can go anywhere you know and it's and it's a, quite a feat to rein that in and to say something and even though his lyrics are extremely stream of consciousness, uh, you know, roulette dares like that'll like exoskeletal, you know, junction at the railroad delay. It's all phonetics. And yet it'll have, as you said, beautifully, you, you said so eloquently, the, the power of ambiguity and they'll, they'll have left just like Pink Floyd did uh, a legacy um, of that. It's almost like a palette that you leave someone to, Hey, you can paint with the Mars Volta palette and, and, noodle away at the guitar like omar and uh you know mm. uh, and and write these uh you know very esoteric uh very um i i i want to actually ask you about this is with them you know funkadelic i mean i just looked up maggot brain it's like i love that i love <laughs> that kind of relaxed kind of music and stuff but how intense does your uh kind of listening get uh in terms of like heaven do you go into the sort of uh, the mashugas the tools of the world uh, the yeah it's all, yeah it's, yeah coming up to, uh, undertow what an album, oh, huh? this so, guy. Um, yeah, I'm, what I'm what I'm itching to do personally at the minute is um, is get back into a record shop. And oh yeah, I I want to go and buy some primers. I don't know why. I just have a, a real you thing. You didn't just say that. I am yeah. gearing up now uh, for. We have a few connections on the way to Lair. I'm actually potentially speaking with Lura down the line. So you have to be on that. How cool would that be? Yeah, uh, be yeah. Wonderful. Primus, man. And uh, I'm just. I did a big old Les Claypool dive with the uh, of fungi and foe man and uh so is it is it just the primus or do you, do you go into the Claypool sphere of the Clen and Laypool uh the oh, it's, it's, um, yeah he's flying frog brigade and yeah. uh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah of Bernie yeah. Beans this guy he's fucking crazy man <laughs> yeah yeah totally totally and again yeah that's something that um yeah, you would I've, be I've, perfect sorry to interrupt but you would be perfect for Les Claypool stuff man so I'll manifest that for <laughs> yeah. you I'll, say, yeah, I'll tag nice. you and stuff, yeah. man. You know, I, there's been some connections through this thing of the democratization uh, of the Instagrams and stuff. Uh, I'll, I'll have tagged two people they'll have met and then boom, off they go, like collaborating. So, uh, and, uh, I, you know, they're just gearing up now. And, and I'll tell you, I'll give you the, the Kevin Bacon <laughs> connection. So I, sp I spoke with the guys from The Sword. Uh, you know, Kyle and Trivet, uh, who he's stepped away from music now, but uh, the Warp Riders, you know, beautiful album, and and Primus picked them and Wolf Mother to take on tour for this beautiful, uh, you know, a tribute to Kings, uh, to Rush, you know, rest in peace, Neil Pert, uh, rest in power, that guy. And so, and would you be doing, I don't know if down the line Rush were to approach you? Because I, dude, I just want to say it's like a one fucking, it's a one product portfolio, this fucking thing. It's fucking gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> so I I am so hyped for you, man. It's it's a it's a it's a good time, and and I I'm 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 vibing everything you're doing with like the prints, and and I love that you have it. Something kind of similar to me with the podcast is I would say that's my design sphere. I kind of get mm -hmm. to flex my I get my kerning on, get my fonts on, you know. Okay. Uh, and then, yeah. 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 Exactly. So, but now yeah. that I know that you 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 wide you you've got that sort of um. Uh, that uh, 
you know, leaning into the the, the the primus. I'll definitely keep you in mind for like, okay, well, you know, hey, this dude, he did some artwork and fucking talk to this guy, you know? That'd be right. Yeah, that'd be great. And if you've got Larry Lalonde on, yeah, why not? Oh, hell yeah, man, absolutely. So primus, yeah. we've got Funkadelic. Um, very eclectic. I'm really, really digging that. But you know what? I think we've reached a natural point where you've got three wonderful questions from the community directly at you. So if I may, okay. uh, we have... <clears throat> from rock music media uh say uh okay so they um wanted to ask you about how johan mentioned in a interview that there was alternate cover art for la realidad so uh it would be interesting to hear more about that so apparently there was something that uh that would have potentially been a replacement for what eventually ended up becoming the final product uh something of an alternate cover yeah, we, um we went through a few iterations we went through um the the box itself um, was we, we we created one box that was uh, you know people think that this is a a, a monolith mm. and and a, and a huge beast this other one was double if not triple the size um, <laughs> it was enormous we, we we got very carried away a <laughs> yeah I mean it, it it kind of stems from the initial the initial ideas that I gave to the band um, we. Uh, or they rather uh, quickly honed in on the fact that they, it was something that I'd given them. They wanted something to stand on its edge, on its corner. Mm -hmm. um, so that was the, one of the first things that we we got made. Um, I did a bit of maths and, and worked out that this thing was big, but when it came in, it was, um, yeah, it was big. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in terms of alternate art, the, um, the etching, uh, the etchings, the the two portraits that that are on uh, the the two B sides of mm. A Plague Upon Your Hissing Children and You Not Provocateur, mm. um, they were initially we we had one version where they were going on the box, um, so we we were kind of <laughs> just playing. That was that was the early stages when we were playing with ideas, and then um, there was a there was an idea that I sent across that was kind of. Um, like a swirling portal with with an with an eye looking through it, and I think that has turned into the B sides. Um, I think that idea when when Omar decided um, and, and said, "Look, let's just go with uh, straight collage and mm. and use the iconography uh, from the Volta," and he says, as he said in an interview, you know, we were pretty quick turning that around. So within, I think I pulled an all nighter and then. Oh yeah, <laughs> it was there on his on his desk in the morning, um, and that was because a lot of this imagery was actually burned into my subconscious. I, I've been there's a there's a place that I go to in uh, Amsterdam called the Embassy of the Free Mind, mm. um, and it's a museum. And there's a there's a guy called Jacob Boomer, oh, and I forget exactly. I mean, he's like been doing this stuff in the, you know he's like 200 years earlier or so nice um but a lot of esoteric stuff and and the rabbit holes that this guy was was going down was i mean i remember going down similar rabbit holes when you know as a, as a young kid you know you follow to the nth degree um but it's, it's just crazy that the ideas of you know how he was bringing together different symbolism and making his own answers for these things mm. So from from studying a lot of that and um, all the all the, all of this imagery was kind of burned into my subconscious anyway. So I was very quick with that first image, hmm. um, and then Amar wanted to break everything apart, uh, which I've since found out is kind of a method that he he kind of uses. I think Johan has talked about that, or he's or Amar has talked about that in an interview maybe. Um, but yeah, we broke everything apart and uh, and brought it back together. So. Um, I can dig that, answers that initial, Does that answer that initial question? Absolutely, yeah, that covers it. Yeah, nice little, it, yeah. a mini featurette on that. Uh, you know what? Kind of <laughs> mean. But uh, it's uh, we can now, you know, um, uh, vicariously, you know, through this lovely little. Thank you for that, man. Um, so we have uh, from Scolding underscore Coffee. Uh, the box set includes a piece of artwork which I had never seen before. I hadn't seen it clearly yet, but to me, it resembles the album artwork from both Diesel Oust and Francis the Mute. It looks like a head wrapped in cloth resting atop a plate with a beam of light coming out of its mouth and some appendages hanging below the plate. I think it's just on a paper insert inside of the box. What is that artwork? Who made it? Julio Venegas. Does 
it have a name? Please tell us everything you might know about it. Smiley face. So there you go, man. Yeah. Okay. Um, short answer is I made that. Yeah, um, boy. <laughs> 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 I've actually I, I dug out some of the proofs that I, I obviously everything has to get proved. Oh yes, of course. Before it goes to print. And uh, I dug some of these out, so I've got this somewhere here because it's not it's not online yet. Um, it was used in the teaser. Mm -hmm. Used uh, in the teaser right at the beginning, and then we, we didn't really feature. And we loved it. We we loved that little picture a lot. And we tried to get it on uh, on some patches. We tried to get it embroidered onto onto different things. Uh, it just didn't work. It was that's cool, man. The, the unfortunate thing was, I think, with the embroidery, the number of colours in, in an embroidery can't possibly match the number of colours that are in this sort of photographic montage. So, um, that's Beautiful. the one. That's the one. Yeah. Oh, gorgeous. Yeah, and he's not been seen too much. I need to I need to maybe post him on Instagram. Um, Please do, yeah. And, you know, it's nice that it got a little bit of an extended debut here on the Mars World so Podcast, man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's he's like um, he's basically the, the, a pure essence of. For me, he was like the pure essence of the dream. So that the whole, the series of six images are kind of like a little journey through a dream. So um, the front cover is uh, it's it all it, it all revolves around the oranges and that yeah. hat. And it's based around an image by Dali called. Um, uh, Dream caused by the flight of a bee around a pomegranate a second before awakening. Pomegranate. I'm going to talk to you about that, but yeah, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. So Storm used a lot of imagery that was um, modern, modern surreal, surrealist based. So the Kiriko and Magritte. Mm. Uh, so the, the tailor's dummy is the Kiriko. The, the clothed head is Magritte. Um, so I wanted to as a little homage to Storm and to kind of support what he was doing, I thought it relevant to bring in that image um, that was by Dali. So here we've, we've changed the pomegranate for an orange and the, the uh, bee has become an ant. So this is, this is uh, what opens up the dream. Mm. Um, so that's why on the little badges, we have a little orange, orange word and a little ant. May as well bring up my little badge get? there. My little Volta badge there. Yeah. While we're showing yeah, cool. off badges. Nice. <laughs> That's an excellent, man. Um, and the, the 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 motif of the pomegranate, I mean, I I, I did the art school thing and, and, and Andre Breton, you know, he, he went to war, uh, this uh, surrealist guy, and he would see the cracked open heads of these soldiers and stuff, and he would be like, pomegranate. And so then it became this, this uh, you know, uh, unspoken thing in surrealism to, to have these fruit uh, represent. Um, and, and then if we're talking about um, symbolism with art actually i could ask you uh, i know that you said you want to stay ambiguous but you can feel as free as you like to uh i like that you're kind of touching on little elements like for example with um some of the figures from uh who are now very beloved by the way from uh, bedlam which is um there's the pointing the pointing bedlam guy he's become the focus of some volta memes like we want you kind of thing okay, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's been yeah, really good i'll send you some volta memes i think you'll really dig it man uh, have you been on the reddit at all uh i mod over have. there i have you... very very briefly yeah yeah, yeah very very briefly i, yeah, I saw like... that someone someone wanted the uh diagonal slice photoshopped out of an image that was so me that they... Was that you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was it you? I, yeah, that was me. I asked for that because I was I was working on the Mars Volta uh, podcast cover, you know. And obviously, the whole oh, okay. the whole endeavor is completely non profit. I just like to signal boost uh, worthwhile creators. So there's um, I'm, I'm I feel very unfettered. And obviously, if anyone ever has any issues, it's like, well, I'll chuck a I'll chuck a stray and just boom create something myself but um honestly that that artwork it just really was like well there's no there's no I, I need i need look no further really and uh all i did was just grab the the volta font and everything and um really beautifully lends itself and then the central figure i want to talk about this is the uh obviously you got the pyramid here and the 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 eye with the pins in it um i i think i may be lacking a bit in my uh I'm just immediately trying to place so the pinned eye. What? What? Uh, which record is that from again? So that's 
the Nurseatic ESP, isn't it? Yeah, the ESP. Um, right. The state, they're actually like little staples. That's from Francis, isn't it? That's from, uh, mm. I think I'm right in saying that's from a, like a, a little stapled collage on the inner sleeve of Francis the New, I believe. Right. And yeah, if got- I'm right. You've just made Jeff um, very, very happy, especially with some of the stuff that you've created yourself. You've you've just gotten a, an energetic, spiritual bear hug from him. Uh, have you met Jeff yet? Um, I've actually talked to him on email. Jeff Jordan, um, my boy. Yeah, one of one of the first things I did um, when this was released, I wanted to, I wanted, to, I fell in love with his work through through working on this. You know, the the stuff that he creates is just exceptional, mm. and I. I saw that he was on Instagram, but he, he doesn't do Instagram now. He's just doing Facebook. Um, so, and I, I don't, I got thrown off of Facebook a long time ago for, for having a stupid name and I, I refused cool, to give him my passport and all that stuff. So, Good um, uh, yeah, no, I, I talked to him. I wanted to buy a, a painting of his. Oh, and okay, an original. So, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. So I, I bought a little painting. Um, I bought one of his cyborg series. Oh, um, so I, I, what I, it's here now, but it's sadly still, it, it's unpackaged, but packaged, oh. if, if you like. Um, I need to find a frame. Mm. Um, I don't want to put that, that bad boy up. Uh, I need to frame. give... I need to give uh, Jeff, yourself, and just the Volta themselves, uh, like a wholesome, wholesome warning is uh, as much as the Realidad uh, endeavor is in its essence a closing and a sealing off of what is and what was be prepared for people to absolutely come at you and just like playfully endearingly just like and i hope obviously i don't want any demanding fuck the demanding it's only what comes naturally and organically but be prepared for so much love coming your way i i'm just a conduit for it a lot of people listening right now wherever they're doing their laundry or whatever it's like uh i'm glad i've got albert there just passing on the good vibes for what you guys have made and uh yeah and they're doing their thing i love them for all that they do unto themselves yourself as well uh what they're each doing outside of volta whatever um uh, but you're gonna have a lot of new volta fans coming in here I, and yeah uh, my instagram wasn't partic- i didn't have that many followers i think it's uh it's, it's gone up to i don't know a couple <laughs> hundred or so now yeah. um which isn't which isn't a lot by any by any standards oh, but i'll good. be sending the <laughs> whole uh, network here. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, that would be great yeah, yeah no but the, the the messages that people send me are really lovely i think it's I think Mars Volta fans are quite exceptional in 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 their in their passion for the band, but their acceptance of other people liking that band as well. Because it it can get quite tribal, can't it? It's, Gatekeeping, um, yeah. yeah, yeah, it can it can be, and I I don't find that with them. No. I don't find anyone. Oh, you're a new Mars Volta fan. I'm an old Mars Volta fan. I don't know. I, maybe it is. Maybe it's not. I don't find it's like that. And I think the things that they've written to me are are really lovely, and I. It's not every day that I get things like that, and it does make my day to get that. So, you yeah, thank you very much to everyone that's written stuff. No worries, and expect much more of it for sure. Um, no, man, we've we've you. almost been going um, for an hour. Uh, I wanted to fill the the, the last uh, couple um, just with some riffs, actually, uh, yeah, just from artist to artist, um, because we have this uh, this thing of the art and this thing of the music, and uh, this thing of live music as well. Uh, are you a much of a live music person? You like to go to gigs, uh, you know? Yeah, absolutely, just... when, when when they're on, yeah, totally. when they're on, um, yeah. yeah. The, 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 I was trying to think what the last gig I went to was. Um, That's a good question. I, I know I went one gig. I went to. I think it's too long ago. Really, was Idols, and I put my neck out i put my neck out so badly <laughs> I, th- I think i ruptured something just from head banging oh, buddy. Um, <laughs> so go. um it was just it was just a really really cool night um but yeah we go we go to a lot of different stuff um That's my wife likes classical music so she's a classical musician so we go to go to classical stuff go to opera as well that's um, right this that's, guy that's quite nice um yeah. Yeah, I can't. Last gig I went to, not not entirely sure. It seems such a long time ago. Mm. Yeah. I was hearing of all two kinds of people to Venn diagram and speak with each other. It was Sean Crahan from Slipknot and uh, Nergal from from Behemoth. Uh, they were just riffing about um, just all of the all of the insights that this forced kind of um, 
you know, uh, maybe it'll make some people's eyes roll or whatever. Oh, they're talking about COVID again. But frankly, the planet needed it. I think we all spiritually, psychologically needed the the break, the rest. And I'd be remiss to not uh, just touch on what, uh, you know, this period of, it's pretty, histo- It's we are, we are living in history now. But what has yeah, it brought for you in terms of, uh, you know, artistic shifts, uh, life shifts, uh, anything you wanted to kind of riff on? I mean, the, th- the thing I find kind of worrying, I think, we all, like you say, we all did need to just slow down. We've got the climate crisis uh, ahead of us as well. We all needed to slow down and we all kind of appreciate that slower pace of life. Mm. I fear it's going to be completely squandered by politicians with vested interests. And I I think, you know, we're seeing that already. Mm. Certainly here in Germany, I think we have the option to, to shut things down a little bit further, which you know i'm I'm not in favor of curfews and things like that i don't think they really bring a lot we we, we have a curfew here at the minute oh what's Um, the curfew for you guys in hamburg so after nine o'clock you're not allowed on the street except if you're a bomb person just you no one else only you (laughs) are not allowed (laughs) i don't know what you did i'm kidding (laughs) no or or with the dog if you if you have a dog or uh there's all these weird get arounds and things you can have it's i don't see what difference time really makes if you're Mm -hmm. going to have an illegal party you're going to have an illegal party whether it's a curfew or not so um but i think yeah you're right it's it's brought us to a point where we're slowing down a bit um i read that coal is going to be big in the next next few years which is Mm -hmm. which is just great you know how, how wonderful that's going to be um hopefully we don't squander the opportunity i have full hope that the most of the people in the world won't squander that opportunity but unfortunately they're not the ones in charge are they they're not the ones that, that hold the hold the keys so yeah so another thing i need to say and sometimes it's like um you know people just don't notice either because they're just going about their lives doing things you and I, again we well i'll start the podcast saying this i'll end it i'm not smoke blowing here you you hold space extremely well you you have a very like a, a, a hourly pleasant cadence to how you fucking speak dude you need to next time you're fucking just doing stuff in the studio chuck on the voice memo just spout off whatever thoughts man chuck it on zoom sorry chuck it on anchor spotify have this app this is the one i use and you just you put the thoughts on there and it's like okay whatever you know a cd clark's musings of whatever and because it would just be really rad, man. I think I may have tapped into something. I just want to say, I don't want to put you on the spot. Bless you. I think. Yeah, you- no, I mean, one of the things I want to do next is, um, is is write some stuff. Just write some stuff for, for some magazines and things. Um, I, I love writing. I always have enjoyed writing. So there's there's some things I want to write. And Excellent. Yeah, if, if there's any magazines that, are, that want to be involved with that, that would be great. Rad, rad. I think I was just about to um, skip out on this, the third question. So it is from our good friend. I should Lupin. answer the second question a bit better. I'll answer that a bit better on Instagram. I'll put okay, something cool. up on Instagram. Yeah. Well, cool. that was, um, you just, you just chuff them a bit. They'll be very ha- glad to hear that as they're listening back. So Ruben Gonzalez Juarez asks, thanks. And thanks for doing all these cool things. TMB, uh, uh, people, he can hear people talking about TMB for hours on online, which is great. Um, yes. Yeah, so uh, was there any other Mars Volta artwork that you wish you could have uh, used, uh, and fit into the design, but, uh, didn't fit that it, it just, you just couldn't figure out a way to fit it in. Yeah, there was, I mean, um, somebody asked me how many drafts I did mm. of, of this work. Um, and the answer was um, the B sides and the uh, the little uh, flying guy with the tentacles was mm. just spontaneous. Mm. The front cover was about 80, 90 percent spontaneous, I would say. Nice. We went through different iterations. So the, the initial creation of it, completely spontaneous. Mm. Then we started to add and add and add, and it became it became too confused and not dreamlike enough and not there's a certain calmness i think in dreams even when they're really freaky and and and, and quite quite scary there is a certain underlying i think it, it, it it's that juxtaposition which probably makes it even even more freaky that it's a calm environment with a really freaky thing happening um so there were things that i wanted to use um there were more red 
octopus type tentacles. Nice. Uh, there was a lot of amputate, so that's from amputecture. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. end, it ended up going into a, most of amputecture, I think, if I'm looking at the box right. Yeah, it goes into a little badge. Yeah. Uh, on the Magritte man, there's a lot of amputecture in there. And I, that's what I did. Instead of um, having him coming out of a wall, so there was a red tentacle versus a blue tentacle, um, it all got squished into a little badge. So there were things it got taken off mainly to create a calmer, mm. better environment. Okay. I can do that. And and obviously I just, I'm, I'm going to manifesting this. I, I really hope that uh, just in terms of the response that it does catalyze. Okay. Well, you know, people have really, you know, been really, really celebrating Volta with this. And there's that thing, which beautifully they are at, at, at best, you know, the art and commerce thing, they work so beautifully together that they can each speak to and enhance the other. So to see people really loving Realidad and just seeing maybe if they start saying, okay, well, let's let's take this chunk of the artwork and make a special, you know, t-shirt out of that or something, that would be great. Then you might get a chance to kind of realize some of these, you know, the extended Realidad pro project. And uh, I think that would be kind of cool. So then you can realize some of these things, you know? Um, I, I couldn't get through this without looking at the symbolism of the orange fruit, so if I may. Okay, obviously orange is a symbol of fertility in parts of Asia, Middle East. It is or previously was commonly associated with weddings, interestingly. So, the marriage of two things. Interesting. I dig it, man. Um, any deeper symbolism for you, again, that you feel yeah, happy so to reveal? With, or um... with, with that, I think um, it was definitely an offering. So, yeah, um, right there. Yeah, yeah I, I get it. Yeah, there's definitely the, the, the whole Buddhist mm. symbolism of, of offering fruit and things like that. Yeah, for me personally, yeah. There's, there's, you know, you asked me about your own personal things in, in artwork. There's a lot of my own personal things in that artwork mm. that I've kind of put together. That, that just is, that comes instinctively, I think. It just is, yeah. is how it is. I think every, most people probably work in that way. But yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. I can dig it. And I sense to you, energy-wise, uh, there to, there being some form of a, I would say, a practice of some kind. I think you seem like a very mindful, centered person. Is there something where, with this, this uh, with, we're in that sphere of spiritualism here, um, in terms of a practice you have, maybe meditation-wise, or it's just, just something I'm picking up on. Uh, you, you mentioned you do your running, but uh, is there anything uh, connected to that, yoga or something? I think I get a sense of that. Yeah, I mean, at the minute, I've got um, I've got really bad tendonitis. So, um, oh man. Uh, so I've been, I've been oh, starting to do a bit of yoga. The mm. problem the problem I have is um, I get quite fiery about things, and <laughs> meditation is wonderful because it it gives me that mindfulness to just step back from a situation. Mm. Um, yeah, my, my wife's my wife sees it that not that I'm fiery with her necessarily, but she, she, she's like, no, 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 no. You need to, you need to just step back from these things. And yeah, through meditation, definitely it helps so much. I, I recommend that to absolutely anybody just ground yourself and, and it, you can bring it into your day. Definitely. Into your day and into your art for sure. And we, we picked up on it definitely. So I actually will, uh, side with, um, uh, CD on this. Uh, I'll, I'll, you know, just center myself with all my kind of little tidbits. I think I did a nice mixture of kind of, you know, holding back on some of what I would have normally do dove into. It is so rich, just like the Volta itself. No better pairing. And again, no smoke blowing, no better pairing of art director for this project, man. Like that's the cosmos doing its thing, like finding the perfect person. So shout out to Clouds Hill and, and Johan for like finding the right people. So the whole, all the energy around this is so positive. So it's, uh, and it was a, Real pleasure speaking with you, man, for sure. And with you as well. I mean, just to say, um, the whole team that, that works with this, there's, there's also, I should also mention uh, Stina, and I yep. should also mention Andrea, because they're part of the team that have, that have put this together, and they've worked tirelessly to put this together. The reason why that box looks so good is because of them. It, it just, it fits together so beautifully, and it's just a well-manufactured thing. So, um, well. Cloud Hill has a really good vibe, definitely. Nice. Well, they need to all watch their inboxes because I'm coming for you for this. For this show. <laughs> the whole idea is to signal boost a lot of sometimes there's the unsung 
components of these records and i'm all about that just uh, everyone tangentially because it's they sometimes you'll just see them in the bottom half of like the you know the credits of the album is like those are people who devoted hours and they're part of what made this work uh absolutely there are there's so many so many uh un un uncredited people yeah mm -hmm. definitely definitely it's a big team it's a big big team effort shout out shout out to them all um so i want to ask man what's on for the rest of your day um that's a good question <laughs> I, need to, I need to eat something yeah, um that's a good idea i need uh, yeah my, my wife's been good she's been kind of working around me today so um okay. just to sort of give me the space to to do my to do my stuff so i need to go and see my wife for a bit uh, <laughs> you know maybe help, help her. I guess she's, you try she, that She's a painter as well, so she's oh, she's currently cladding her studio, um, okay. which quite frankly needs it. Um, and so I'll probably help her doing that. Oh, that's, that's wonderful! Definitely. If you wanted you? to, oh, well, myself, I'll be you know editing this one up. Uh, I do balance it between the three. It's the storytelling stuff with the quantum myth. Is this thing I'm doing? It's just uh, taking all of the world mythologies and just kind of doing uh, taking what Joseph Campbell did theoretically and in, in that academic sense, but then actually give it having a go at, at you know doing the whole mythology mythopoeia thing and uh, that's always fun uh, and then the podcast is the second and the third kind of of the trifecta of creativity is the is the patterns and i'll just throw myself at any of those three at any point of the day um so uh but definitely editing this one up this will be a fun one uh uh good good on you not just again we have the whole artist thing the whole everything associated with tmv Get, remove all that just unto yourself as a person it's in such a pleasure man you, you you're living well you're doing it you're doing it well <laughs> thanks man it's, it's been a pleasure talking to you it's been as the first podcast goes it's been reasonably uh reasonably painless for me <laughs> and uh I'm, I'm feeling relaxed so that's good thank you very much no oh, you're all good man well you know what i will let you have the rest of your lovely uh wife acknowledging day <laughs> <laughs> um and shout out to her if you if you want to like um if she wants to have her like social media stuff feel free i'll just put it in the description you know it is forty thousand or so subscribers on the main feed so that'll go out to them oh. if she wants a bit of signal boosting yeah and i'll send the whole uh, network your way so you might get oh wow well, tool podcast oh that's albert again you know <laughs> <laughs> that's it on pod primus podcast you know so all right I'll leave you to it, man. Such a great uh, time connecting with you. Be well. Thank you very much, man. And uh, let's stay in touch on, on Instagram and stuff. Yeah. Stay in touch, man. We'll chat again soon. Take it easy, man. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> Take care. Take care, man. Bye.